Um, this is a chat, though, that I recorded about, um, what, about an hour and a half ago um, in the uh, bowels of the BBC behind the uh, radio theatre with uh, Ed O'Brien and Tom York of Radiohead. And uh, we sort of started by talking about uh, the gestation of the new album In Rainbows. Um, so... When you came back together to start working on In Rainbows, I read a quote from one of you. It might have been uh, Johnny, actually. He said, when we came back together, the studio was dead. You'd had a long layoff, a lot of kids been born, different time. The studio was dead. It was a fresh start. Is yeah. that how it felt, going back? It was, uh, yeah, it was, there was definitely a corpse involved. <laughs> <laughs> For quite that a while. had to be uh, dipped in uh, water and, you know, uh, plugged into the, a lightning conductor. And Yeah. You understand what I'm talking about? No. no. Well, okay. vaguely. I mean, you know, but I mean, was it something that needed to kind of... Was it a great way to start again with a fresh slate, or, you know, did it take some time it to took feel a lot your of way time back in? Did it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you do when it takes a lot of time? Do you have... Do you sort of play a lot of songs, or just jam with ideas? How do you restart the machine? Well, we we do a bit of re we do a bit of rehearsing. Yeah, <laughs> sounds back like to the apple good shed. <laughs> yeah. What of old songs? You pick no, it? no, 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 not of old songs. No way. Right. All new songs. Yeah. Um, and we do a bit. We tried a bit of recording as well because we've got our own place, which yeah. is a studio as well. Yeah. So we do a bit of that, and we generally get quite confused and frustrated. We find a, we find a wall and we yeah. smash our heads against it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't start with a. Do you start with a kind of finished song, or do you start with fragments of ideas and um, work on those? The, 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 the song in a way is finished but uh, it it can be some well it, to varying degrees something can some things can feel completely finished but not be other things come together um as it moves down the line you know yeah. it's it's pretty sketchy it's pretty random i think the you know uh we sort of had quite a break and everyone was having kids so it was difficult to focus you know yeah that's yeah. which is kind of understandable i think i mean do you have a, do you have a big archive i remember you coming on the afternoon show on radio one and you did uh, follow me around yes which we is never very, which is yeah, a good know, it's it's got never emerged and new took 10 years to yeah. come around didn't yeah. it yeah yeah are there loads more like that yeah yeah in your head <laughs> or on tapes or what mostly in my head right. or, or in our heads anyway yeah yes yeah um uh you, there's, yeah, it's very confusing. There's lots of hard disks with things I can't remember on them. Yeah, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, you know. And then, and then, what do you do when you've got sort of some sort of rough sense of direction? Is the location important? Because you went to a manor house mm. this time, didn't you? It was like sort of and, and, and sort of made a wagon train circle of camper vans <laughs> and stuff. Like, is that, is that, yeah. is that yeah. how it works? Well, it, that stuff is fun. You know, that stuff is when we started back with Nigel. That's the kind of stuff. He, he was really keen, and he was right. Get us out of our studio. Get us out of our We've comfort been there zone. Too long. Yeah. yeah. Get us in this place. Have an experience. And <clears throat> and kind of you hope that, that that it goes back to that whole thing of like when we did OK Computer yeah. and we went to Jane Seymour's gaff outside Bath. Gaff, right. it's not a gaff, it's a <laughs> blooming lovely place. But um, and and it, it, you just you you capture you have something else, you get something else hopefully. So yeah, and we came up to London here, did a recording, which was good. Yeah, that was I preferred that. I have to say, I'm, it's a bit it's a bit of a nasty habit to get into, frankly. Make a record. Oh, I'm going to go find a place to uh, pitch up in the middle of nowhere and blah blah blah. It's a bit yeah. sort of ridiculous, but we yeah. had to do it at that point. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you come back to make this record, was the, was the sort of the journey you've been on from being like the, the, the Radiohead rock band through the experimentation? Has it been a sort of elliptical voyage that's come back and affected the way you write and record and even perform? Do you think so? The sort of the kid A and amnesiac stuff, which went, you took you further out, and you've perhaps come a bit back around that. Um, well, the weird, the, the Does that weird, make any sense? The weird thing about the kid A and amnesiac easier thing is that, that that it was one thing like when we recorded it and then it became something completely different when we relearned it sort of so to speak and played it live mm. and um and it made us realize that what we thought was sort of quite um uh well not polemic exactly but quite sort of uh a left turn actually when we played it as the band it was it wasn't at all so it was a natural sort of progression and um uh I, I think we it's it's less a sort of going around and ellipses and more just you what, you're responding to whatever time you're in and flailing around mostly I think you um don't necessarily progress at all <laughs> <laughs> there must be some sense of yeah no I, yeah. well I mean the thing, the thing the thing is the thing is you know I I personally I really really enjoy uh working in studios I think it's really good fun but it's it's a kind of a drag as a band to do that, you know? So it's, it's this weird sort of tension. 
do you, I mean, do you enjoy it? Because I was also reading an interview with you saying you're impossible to live with when you're making a record. Oh, right. Oh, well, not just generally. Yeah. I mean, no, I, well, generally I am, yes. <laughs> But, I mean, is it, I mean, you know, one would think that, that, you know, you're in a studio doing what you want to do. You'd yeah, think, well, well, I've won the lottery. How many people get the chance to no, make I a think, good living out I of think, what it is they really love? I think what, what it is, if you, if you go for long enough not doing something new that you that inspires you and you're not uh, and you're happy with, you, you start to go on a, a downer, really, because you kind of, you have no raison d'etre. Right. Like, um, because um, ever since I was a, a kid... Um, I make meaning from my life and um, are, are able to sort of get through the next week or whatever um, with music. Yeah. So um, when that's sort of taken away from you or, or it ceases to make sense or you, you're not getting something from it, it's it's really hard. For me, it's really hard. And, yeah, yeah I, I could go and work on my mate's building site or I could do something else. And But basically, that's that's personally speaking the way i'm i'm born and um yeah. I, I try not to complain about it but that's the way yeah. it is it just does my head in you know and you don't look a natural hod carrier no not hods no <laughs> but no but there's other jobs no, there are there? other <laughs> jobs <laughs> um we, we're gonna hear uh, lots of you playing live in the second hour of the show we ask you to uh, pick a tune each um ed you you've chosen some rem i think yeah well i had an rem day yesterday because i think um accelerate was released wasn't it yeah and yeah. um i had like one of the i was telling tom i had a, just such a great afternoon i did did the supper with the kids and we listened to Murmur and the kids, you know, they were rocking to Murmur, which yeah. is such a, I mean, it's easy to forget. I mean, they're obviously a great band and you, there's this whole big build about this new album, which is great. But for me, it was like also going back to how great they were as well, you know, and, and Murmur was such a great record. And then, you know, obviously Reckoning and Fables and... and uh, Sitting Still, you say? Yeah, but Document, the track I've chosen is Finest Work song. And it's yeah. just... They they were and they are an amazing band, you know. And they when we when we formed our band, REM and like the Smiths were probably like them. They were like the people we really looked up to. Yeah. And then of course we got to meet them and go on tour with them. And that, I, I listening to their records yesterday, I suddenly remembered that that when we were, when we were told that you got the support slot with REM, it blew my mind. It, it, <laughs> and it validated everything that we did because we were deeply insecure about what we just released the bands. You know, we'd we'd sort of still were in the shadow of creep, and this band sort of took them under took us under our under their wing and and showed us you know you could do this thing and be dignified and be cool and you know and you could ask peter buck which i did you know ten thousand questions of train spotter questions about murmur mm. and he's happy to answer and oh, yeah, I, you know yeah. it's they're 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 an amazing band yeah. they're, and and I, I had such a great day listening to their music yesterday i was like god i play here an rem track and this this has quite a lot of weight in it which yeah. you know so uh, this is a corker i think so this is rem and uh, finest work song <laughs> Finest work song by R.E.M., which was a show and tell from uh, Ed, from Radiohead, Ed and Tom are here. Whose idea was the whole download thing of uh, In Rainbows? Our management. Was it? Yeah. 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 What did you think? Do you think that's madness, or did you think, why not? Um, well, uh, it, it was the logical, um, logical consequence of, of every record being leaked, um, previous, the last five records or whatever, four records, um, mm. um which was, you know, out of our hands and not our decision. So we wanted to use it in our f favour. Um, and also, it was, it seemed to be in the spirit of the record. And the fact that we actually felt really confident about the record meant that we could sort of feel, not exactly reckless, but we could, the priority was just to get people to hear it without the usual sort of, trawled out reviews of like and here they are blah 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 da 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 mm. um cut and pasted reviews da da like everybody gets it the same day no preferential treatment and it becomes an exciting event you know which seemed to be a, it a, came out and it was like a comic coming out of nowhere wasn't it suddenly yeah. the room was there it, there it was straight yeah, away which yeah. to me is sort of you know that's like the dream scenario yeah you know? yeah what about what about the pricing i mean i i, th I think i read somewhere that the uh, you made an average of one pound eleven per copy which is actually more 
per copy than you'd make if you had a uh, conventional record yeah. deal. So do you think it worked out how about... How much do we get, how much do we get for... I don't know. <laughs> we used to get about a quiz. <laughs> about, you about used about to get a about a quid. From right. me and Mike. Yeah, so one definitely... pound eleven would be good then. <laughs> we were 11 p up on each. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean you know, obviously a lot of people are saying, well, what would you pay? Would you pay anything? Yeah. Is, it, is it morally right to download it for free? Yeah. If someone's a big Radiohead fan and they downloaded it for free, is that all right? Well, the point is we were using it like the radio. Hmm. You know, we were using the, the idea of, of, of um, the, the, the piece of work gets passed around, you know, and, and we're encouraging pe people to pass it around, and there's a downside because you could say it devalues it, but the upside is that um, actually people get to pass it around, and they get to, you know, there's an entire sort of peer-to-peer peer, peer, -to -peer um, thing going on in the net, swapping music, and we thought, uh, we Radiohead for whatever reason has always been sort of high up on, um, on that thing you know in terms of what people swap around so we just wanted to use that because it was a network already there and they all were interested in waiting to hear what the record was so um i don't think we really saw it as in any way sort of it wasn't really about how much we were going to get that in a way was an afterthought mm. it was about well let's get it out and spread the word and that's it and and the sort of pay what you like was kind of taking the piss, really. Yeah, right. I mean, but have you made, you've made, what, about the same? Just, I mean, it's, it's not, you've not been ra made radically less than other albums based on, <laughs> because if you, yeah. if you, it's a great, no. it's a great idea and it was done yeah. and it was an event and I can yeah. see all that. You know, it's interesting how you would perceive that event if you'd all been, taken a hundred, a 50% pay cut <laughs> yeah. on this album. Yeah, that's How do right. you look at it then? Well, well we wouldn't, I, I we didn't know. Different. We had no idea whether it was going to. No, but you will. At some point, how do you mean? Well, you will know whether. You oh yeah, you oh know. no, we're, no, it's quits like, in. Know. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's fine. Good. Yeah. But, uh, right, the, yeah. the comedy, the, the, the high comedy <laughs> element to me was like when we went to number one in the US, okay. and like a huge proportion of that was downloads. Yeah. yeah. Off iTunes and stuff. Yeah. And like we were giving it away, that was and they still downloaded yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Oh, ideal. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the, the the other thing is that you know that that's a higher higher quality version of it as well and things like that yeah. and also you realize that you, there's a load of people out there who don't know that you know they're scared to go onto a website and download something a lot of people if they download something it's off the itunes website that's all they'll do mm. you know that their computer's set up to do that they hit those buttons bang mm -hmm. but also we want you know also the the other side of it is we did a normal release as well yeah, so yeah. everything everything went normal the, yeah you know and, and some people were, were weirded out by that but like well if we hadn't done that to us that's sort of like saying the internet is the future yeah which is not true yeah, right, yeah. Know, i don't think if you if someone if someone you were a real fan of porty said perhaps mm -hmm. because we're going to hear a track that you've yeah. picked on um if they put out a new album download would you be tempted to download it for nothing see if you liked it and then pay what you thought it was worth i don't know <laughs> Seems to me a well, perfectly fair yeah, no, deal. Though. And a lot of people, when in when that when it was announced on the Monday or whatever, I went on some chat rooms somewhere in America, You're and brave. that's exactly what they were saying. If yeah. we like it, you know, we'll pay something. I think that's. Fair I think enough, that's pretty cool. You know, yeah, yeah. It's an honesty box. Yeah, exactly, an honesty box. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Um, we'll have some Porter said from yes. the new record, which uh, yeah. I haven't heard yet. And even as we're talking in this dingy basement with uh, old piano and what looks like um, uh, Lenny Kravitz's old bedroom furniture, <laughs> um, uh, I still haven't heard it. So, so you can tell us about it, and then um, we'll be hearing it for the first time when we put this out on the show later on. Okay. Well, um, the track I chose is called the uh, the Rip. It's track four. Um, on the album and um i just com got completely obsessed by it last week um and obviously it's a long time since they put out a record so um you kind of think well wow what's it going to be like and it's it's pretty damn extraordinary and um uh it's it's just really really out there it's a really out there record and you know i just i think um edge and jeff and, and beth deserve um to put, have crowns put on their head by the end of the year for just being the, the bravest nutters, um, th you know, yeah. from Bristol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Portishead and the Rip.
Um, that is Portishead and the Rip, Tom York's own copy, because it's, it's not out yet, is it's it? It's not out yet. Uh, um, and, uh, yes, it's uh, embargoed, whatever that means. Um, are but, you going to uh, get in trouble for playing it? Then? No, I'll no. Blame you. Well, um, we called them and it's cool. Okay, good. Because they, they actually gave us copies of it and said it was okay to have copies of it, so right. um, if there's any political shelling, and, oh, well, whatever, you know. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, it's, uh, it's quarter to seven um, in the basement of the BBC, so um, no, uh, the uh, yeah. Radiohead on stage tonight uh, at about ten past nine. Um, uh, congratulations on getting married. You're the, you, were the, you. you were the last bachelor, Ed, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, kind of, yeah. Well, uh, you yeah, I mean, I'm not yeah, really. No, you're not married. I'm not really, no. Oh, no, no, all right. Yeah. I mean, do you think that, um, you know, the age you are now and the way you are in your lives, I think, well, now, let me get this quote right, um, Johnny, a quote in an interview, said, we were never teenagers. And I was thinking about that, oh, because I God's think, so um, <laughs> I, He's I, worse than his brother. I kind of know what he means, that I think, you know, I think I'm a more convincing 50-year-old than I ever was a 21-year-old. Yeah. So do you think that kind of this, uh, the, the, where Radiohead are now, do you think that that kind of befits you? Hmm. Mm. You're not buying it, Tom, are you? No. I thought I was going to be dead when I was 33, so it's all a bit of a shock to me, frankly. <laughs> Is it? Mm. Yeah. You thought you said you were getting darker as you got older. Obviously. Oh yeah, it keeps yeah. You know. Especially at sort of four o'clock in the morning. Right. I'm particularly dark then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I mean, does it feel like that you kind of the, the the confidence of knowing exactly what you're doing, or is it still a sort of voyage of uncertainty every it's, time you do a, something? It's a huge voyage of uncertainty. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think that's um, that's what's great about it, and that's what's also really frustrating is that sometimes we could do with a little bit more collective self confidence. Yeah. A, a lot of the time. Even now, it, with the success you've had. Completely. This right. last record, we were like, when Nigel started working with us, he really, uh, we had to go out on tour to play in front of thousands to, to beef up our, our you to know. Remind, to, to remind us. To remind us who, who we are. Yeah. Because we forget, it takes we about forgot. a week. And, and, and. So after about three years. Yeah. No idea at all. You, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny and, and it's, it's, it's one of the problems with the band is that we could do with a little bit more self-confidence in that, in that way. You should ask Paul said about that when they get in. Yeah. yeah. See if, yeah. yeah. You should ask, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, what is it, what, what do you mean by the self-confidence? Do you mean, do you mean as a collective band or, or with each other as people once you get into a room? Uh, no, uh. I don't, I, I'm not quite sure. Personally speaking, I'm deeply cynical about, um, things, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, much, much happier to tear things down than build things up, so. Right. And, and also, I think, you know, you look at the history of bands, is that often with bands, the, the, the way that it goes is there's a wind of opportunity. You know, usually, it seems to be the great bands usually start, you know, around their 40s or whatever, start not making such great records. Right. And uh, it's because they're knackered. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's fine for solo artists. Look at Neil Young. You know, yeah. he's always gone on it. But for bands, it's harder because in order for a band to make a record, you all have to be moving in the same way. Yeah. And inevitably, when you've got little children and families, that's one of the things that we found on this record. Some people, four people, might be on board, or three, and then two aren't. Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't a job in the sense of like you can clock in and clock out. No, no. that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, do you think it's important that you're all? I, mean, I know you live in London, yeah, Ed, but the rest of you have all stayed in Oxford. And again, I, I read something about Colin said that I think that sort of subconsciously there's a feeling that if one of you moved to the Bahamas, <laughs> it would, I think his phrase was, break the juju. <laughs> <laughs> which I quite like. Do you think that there's a kind of geographical, the, that that keeps you together? You need to be relatively close, because obviously London and Oxford yeah. not that far, yeah, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that that's important? Uh, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. I think it's, is it, was, it was, yeah, someone I know, Joe Moss, the manager of the Smiths and yeah. stuff, he said that all bands should live within 10 miles of one another, otherwise yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah, and yeah. And there's a certain amount of truth in that. Well, Def Leppard lived on different continents. <laughs> Look what happened there. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we're, uh, we're uh, looking forward to... Oh, if you are arguing, there's no self-assertiveness. Who has the final say? Oh, he does. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there it goes. Sleeping. Get All right, good to see you. Enjoy tonight. Thanks, Cheers, man. Thanks a lot. Cheers.